Okay, take four. Um, you went, battery went dead, so we got you plugged in the wall, and I've taken two other shots at this. And I'm telling you, once you get a little, a little petroleum jelly on these O-rings, and this, everything gets out of control, man, you can't hardly hold on to them. This is a, a fiberglass mock-up of the the brake bracket uh, that Paul Martin supplies with his stuff. Um, I made it out of fiberglass because obviously the bracket comes longer than this, right? And I, I figured I'd rather cut on a mock-up and screw it up than you only get really one chance to cut the metal. And uh, if you screw it up, you've done screwed it up. So um, as you can see, that spacer, this one here is already done. The two O-rings are in there already. Um, way down in the bottom, you see down in there that there is a, uh, there's a retainer, right? right. The hole is, is not all the way through. There's a little bit of it here that's smaller in diameter, just big enough to get the collar to go through. Right, and of course, they also locate the caliper on the bracket. I made this little mock-up out of fiberglass to be able to get the angle right on the spindle arm uh, and then transfer it to the steel before we cut the steel and cut it wrong, you know what I mean? It's a good idea if you got plastic or even a good piece of cardboard, thick, thicker cardboard. Um, Budweiser box tends to work for that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? I wouldn't know. Uh, but uh, it, it seems to be about the right thickness and stiffness. So um, what we're doing now is, is uh, we've lubed these things up a little bit, and, and we'll get a little more here um, on this collar itself. I mean, once it gets on this rubber, man, look out. Um, you can hardly control these things anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the collar in and get the, uh, the O-ring started in the hole. Use a little hemo here, and again, we ain't got to worry about scratching it or poking it because it's not a seal. It's really just an, uh, uh, taking up the air gap in here, in this hole, right, where the spring used to go. We're going to put the bolt through because we're going to send that O-ring to the bottom of this hole. Uh, we want an O-ring on either end of this spacer. And we're going to pull it on down. You can use, a, you know, Allen wrench or something, just whatever, just to get it down in there. We go ahead and push the bolt out. You see what's going on, right? So we're going to push it, and it should slide right back up. The O-ring should stay, and it did. We're going to push it back up, leave a little hanging out, right? And then we take another O-ring, and let's just... Just because we'll throw the rest. I mean, it doesn't take much. Like I said, these suckers get so slick you can hardly hold on them. I've already dropped them on the floor. That was uh, that was probably uh, uh, take three or, or or two where I dropped that sucker. But you don't want to push too hard and push the uh, the spacer back out at you. Then you'll lose you'll lose the O ring on the inside and have to start all over. This would turn out pretty good. Just use the hemo just a little bit to get it down on there, right? And then uh, we're going to put the bolt in. Oh, it's going to be tight getting that bad boy down in there with that fitting. Okay, so there we are. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you over to the to the cart and show you how we go ahead and bolt the stuff on. I hope the battery holds up. Well, you've been plugged in, but let's take you over there. We'll sit you right down in this thing here and uh, see if we can't get a little something underneath you. Get your angle correct. A little piece of aluminum. Lift your keister. There you go. All right. And we got the pad and the caliper with the bolts and the bracket all in there this is real easy to do when when your rotor and everything's not on it's the best way to do it to tell you the truth otherwise you need three hands um, go ahead and put this thing up here like I told you the only thing that holds this caliper on to the cart is that you thread it into the brake pad and that, there's the backing of the pad that's all the thread you got you don't it doesn't give you much and you would think with that spring pressure on that thing all that time, you know, just sitting in your shop or 
whatever before when it's not being used. And then under use, you're reloading the spring even more. It's putting a lot of pressure on those threads. I mean, I love Paul, but this was kind of a a design I think he, he took with him from the Engenetic Corporation he worked for and then started his own business when he left. Um, I'm not crazy about all this, you know, uh, th threads in the back of your back and plates on your pads. We're just, we're not going to get this super tight. We're just going to get her snug, right? And again, oops, now you're rocking and rolling. Take it easy, folks. Here, let me get you. Um, again, just like the other side, you know, there's, there's very little movement going on there at all. And then, uh, of course, when you put the ro uh, rotor back on, your side I've already got preset. You, we're going to need to make a spacer for here um, to get us, you know, so we've got correct air gap. You know, we, again, we're going to have to make a single spacer to go here on the stub axle there. That will, with the new pad, it'll always clear it just a little bit. And then we'll make a... a, a spacer to go in between here so with a new pad it gives it just a little bit of air gap here so it clears it and spins free and then from there folks it's just as the pads wear it's just going to self-adjust it's just going to come closer 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 till the pads are gone um and uh, i'll bring you that once we get her all plumbed up and fluid in there i'll i'll show you the brake action and how little that pedal moves um i know a lot of doing pre-tech at a lot of races over the years um I kept a lot of four-stroke and low horsepower uh, carts, especially back in the day when they weren't really mandating a second system, a redundant system, or a front system on, on even the higher-powered carts, the 100cc carts. And I'll tell you, I grab a hold of a brake pedal because it was just one of the things you did. You checked for all, of nut, all the proper wire and safety and um, cotter pins and what have you. And then you'd grab that brake pedal and you'd just give it a pull, make sure the brakes work. And some of those brake pedals would go d from here, darn near, all the way to that bumper before they did any kind of work at all. Um, and I look at the person that drives a cart and says, you set it up this way? Oh, yeah, you don't want the brakes to drag. And I'm thinking, well, first time you go reaching for that pedal and you don't have them, and you, one, have to use somebody else's brakes because you run right into the rear of them, or you get off the track in a place where uh, maybe there's no sand trap, maybe there's not a lot of runoff, and there's nothing but concrete or guardrail or worse. Um, just don't understand it. I am just, just an anal about my brakes. I mean, they've got to be spot on. Rather have them, you know, overdeveloped, over-engineered, as my buddy Bob would say, than not have enough, man. Uh, you might you, you can always change the pickup point of the rod at the pedal to give to, to give you more you know if you're used to more travel and that little bit being too sensitive for you you can always adjust the leverage of it to to compensate for for the lack of air gap in your pads and and how quickly they come on so um there's your lesson for now once we get it you know up and running uh, really looking forward to uh People who have never driven a, a cart uh, or a brake system that's self-adjusting to get the first impression of what did you think when they come in, not how fast did it go or how did it handle, how did those brakes work? Um, that'll be interesting enough. But you know how to do it now. It'll work with an Engenetic system. It'll work with a CIK system. The only issue with the CIK is you're going to have to put a real master cylinder on and get rid of that slave cylinder. Or you can use that slave cylinder with a, uh, a fitting uh, in the top, and then you're gonna have to buy, a, I think it's a Schrader valve or some type of, of pressurized check valve. Um, they cost 80 bucks, I looked into it, that's why I just got rid of those, those, those things on the old GP chassis, and put, I just used American uh, uh, master cylinders, and that might be hard for you all over there in Europe. Oh, you know, using some Yankee, but I'm telling you, hey, it works, so. That's it for uh, for today out in the garage. That's all we got for you. I uh, hope you all are enjoying it. Um, any questions, leave me a message or something here on the videos and stuff, guys. Talk to you all later. God bless. We're praying for you.